Hi everyone, this is James. Uh, today I have a special guest, The Foilist TV. You know him already. Uh, welcome. Happy Monday, everyone. Uh, great to be here, and I'm glad to watch this bout. I'm sure almost everyone watching has uh, already seen it because it's an incredible bout. And uh, today we're going to be analyzing it. Yep, so I will say this is my second time watching this. This isn't technically a live commentary for me. Um, but I don't remember that many specifics, so uh, this will be a refresher. Uh, and this is the uh, team match between Germany and Italy from uh, Dusseldorf, correct? Yep, European Championships. Fun, fun. So first off is Japik versus Faconi. And uh, he, Japik is one of my all-time favorites, just personally. Yep. Even though he, what he does fencing-wise could be described as not the greatest looking <laughs> for the oh, most I elegant mean, I just love function it. has a form all its own as they say um, and like however it looks it is uh, unquestionably effective at this level they're able to find a nice attack as Fakoni yeah, tries to counter attack yep uh, so Yopik's like standout feature is of course his uh, crazy twisty counter attack he's like impossible to hit when he does it that time it's a pair of posts though. Yep. Doesn't even need it. Uh, if I recall, uh, you you you, are, you remember the Ficoni versus Yafik live commentary that you did before? F oh yeah, it, it I uploaded it a couple days ago I think, but it's been a while since I actually made that one. Yafik was up uh, early on in that commentary, so mm -hmm. it's uh, that's kind of on his side in a team match. Yeah, in a short form about like this, where you're only going to five uh, in the first encounter, it's uh, you can get away with a lot more craziness like Yopik likes to do, uh, just because your opponent has less time to figure out what to do about it. Although with Faconi, I think he's a pretty clever guy, and having seen Yopik before, he probably knows what's up. Oh yeah, he's a uh, he's a smart one. <laughs> well, to be fair, pretty much everyone uh, in this entire match is. Um, Incredibly crafty. The Italians are, of course, a legendary foil squad. Yeah. <laughs> and the Germans are, like, uh, they are pretty old and very experienced. Oh, yeah. Um, Hang on. I should probably run down the, the list. For the Italians, we have oh, yeah. Faconi, we have Avila, and we have... I can't believe it. Uh, no, Gerato. Yeah. <laughs> Forgot his yeah. name for a second there. Just their main three. And on the, the uh, German side, we have Jopik, we have Kleibrink, we have Sanita, and then Klein is going to be switching in later on. Oh yeah, that's Louis Klein, uh, not Felix Klein. Uh, I didn't even know there was a second Klein uh, on the German squad, but apparently he's a recently graduated junior. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, that's right. So yeah, the Germans are kind of... Um, their squad is definitely getting older, and they don't have that many very talented juniors who are rising up. I feel like Klein is going to be the first of probably a few more. Hopefully. They um, need a few more Kleins. Yeah. Their, their long-term uh, viability as a team will probably uh, be endangered in the next few years um, if this continues, but yeah, it's a hopefully there's a new talent coming in like Klein. Uh, women's foil seems to be having no such issue in Germany. Yeah, there's um, we've got Ebert, we've got Sauer. Um, there's a... Uh, actually, I haven't seen... There was um, that one video of that random tournament that <laughs> came out of nowhere for me between... Um, Ebert and Sauer. There were a ton of German women's foilists there who I've not seen before, but they are all looking pretty good. But anyway, back to this one um, between Jopik and Faconi. Okay. Uh, as as um, we've seen before, in typical... Uh, oh, nice. Faconi tried a circle six flick there, but missed. I love Jopik's the release. confidence Jopik has in his own twistiness. It's just yeah, I know. disgusting, <laughs> to be honest. Like, I just know... That's part of what makes it work, honestly. I know this flick won't land. I have total, yep. like, just... <laughs> <laughs> Same thing right there. So yeah, typically with uh, any Germany versus Italy bout, um, with the Germans, you can't afford to go too fast because they tend to go crazy counterattacking if you rush. And the Italians are uh, typically very good on defense. Mm. So usually, um, even if both these fencers might prefer fencing faster in general, against each other, they almost always slow things down a bit. Uh, make sure they really put the point on properly. And as we're seeing, even with Faconi's pretty typical slow start, uh, it's still not really enough to deal with Yopik's craziness. 
the uh, the cameraman's gonna be seeing a lot of the left side of the piece in a Germany versus Italy matchup. Oh yeah, Alpic does really like the back line. Ficoni slowing it down. A lot. Yep. Mm. Well, he's moving around fast, but he's not getting close, and that's the important thing. Yep. Ooh. Except there, <laughs> tries yeah. to flick with the counter attack. He just gets that an time. inch too close, and then. <laughs> Also, we're seeing whenever Yapik like marches, he's not really trying to finish this. He's just trying to give himself some space on the strip to set up something as he runs away. Like there, he could have finished that if he wanted to, but he rather would counterattack. I think. I mean, no one is ever going to disagree with that statement. Yapik would rather counterattack. <laughs> oh, there he finishes, but uh, to his detriment. There, yep. I feel like Yapik may have gotten a bit greedy. He should have uh, pulled out and waited for the counter. Uh, as, as has been working so far, as and as you said. Alright, Ficoni marches again. Uh, can he find a way through, though? This is... Like, however however good it looks for Ficoni, there's always... Oh, there it is, okay. Kind of second intention idea there. Wait for the counterattack to come out and then parry post. So now Ficoni's going even slower than he was before. So we'll see if this is... That little difference in speed is going to be enough. Mm. Slight adjustment, it, and look, it's 4-2 now, so it's paid off, in yeah. fairness. Not nearly as bad as it could have been. Um, so <laughs> Yopik still doesn't really want to start anything. He just wants that counterattack. Okay. Fikoni's still not rushing, though, so Yopik doesn't really have a good opportunity here. He's on the end, searching. Okay. Man, one of the true masters oh. of the back line, Yopik. <laughs> yeah. It's so tempting to go in on that, but like that could happen at any moment. <laughs> Yopik's kind of unfortunate to go off target. Yeah, it was well timed. Yeah, it's pretty telling that on all of these, except the one where Ficoni uh, made a counter time, Yopik's been not hit or even hit off target against a single time with that counter attack. Yeah, the, the percentage okay. is incredible. Oh. So you saw there, Ficoni accelerated a little bit more, and Yopik wasn't quite ready to step away from it. So that's another potential avenue forward. Oh, I think Ficoni missed the first one. Did he? No, he didn't. I saw two arm motions by Ficoni yeah, there. Yeah, it's on your side with this one, <laughs> but I guess that's hardly yeah. a surprise. Yeah. Although I'm, I couldn't really tell if the light turned on with the first one or the second one. The light may have been a little delayed compared to what actually happened, so. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, but no, you're right. Yep, there it is. So, yeah, it did feel like Ficoni might have been rushing a little bit towards the end because he was so low on time. Um, and he wanted to try and get some more points back. But unfortunately, uh, time is a really salient factor in team matches just because um, <laughs> you take, like, a minute or two to figure out what your opponent's doing, and by then you've only got a minute left to actually, like, score with your actions that you know will work. Yeah. Especially against Germans. Like, they're not going to give you that chance. And here we have the legend himself. Benjamin Clybrink. Ben Clybrink. He's been getting better and better. I love it. Surprisingly, like, it's hard to get better after, like, <laughs> his uh, his long and very uh, successful career, but yeah, he's doing it. He, he, he came back and he didn't look quite the same, but he his results slowly improved, and I love it. Every time yeah. I see him, like, when, when he won in uh, St. Petersburg, you see him win and then you think, and he used to be even better. <laughs> How is it <laughs> yep. possible? Just talent. And he's up against Garazzo, who needs probably no introduction. He's the guy who always marches in three. Um, ooh, interesting. Goes to Garazzo's off target. He took it over more strongly, and Clybrink wasn't, I guess, trying to finish very hard. So, um, I don't know if these two specifically offense each other a lot. I know they have a couple times, but I don't know how much they know about each other. Flybrink is kind of like a bit of a yang to Yopix Yin <laughs> in that he prefers more of the stop hit and parry post game to the just all out, like crushing the distance type counterattacks. Although he can do those when the going gets tough. Well said. That's a, that's a good description. Uh, he's also a lefty, which can be a little bit annoying sometimes. That stop hit of Flybrink is uh, the absolute foundation of his game. It's incredible. Yep. And you can see he's being very loose um, in his on-guard position until he gets close. 
Um, but when he's far away, he's really trying to uh, make the distance change a lot to make it, I guess, harder for Grazzo to find the right distance to hit. Um, which can make stop hitting very effective. If Grazzo commits, even with his arm slightly back or slightly too close... Oh! Very nice. Is that still going to be a touch? I guess so. So that must have started before Clivering stepped past and off the strip. The German coach just said, it doesn't matter, on you go. <laughs> So Grazzo keeps marching, but yeah, as you can tell, he's kind of, seems like he's kind of timid to finish that march um, in any really uh, reasonable way. He's just kind of giving it up all the time. Yeah, funnily enough. But on the other hand, Clybrink, <laughs> Clybrink, I feel like he's kind of fixated on that stop hit and doesn't want to finish himself. So again, this is going to probably be a pretty slow, uh, slow bout between these two. As is, of course, very typical with Germany versus Italy. Oh, that was, that was nice. Great patience from Garazzo there. Yeah, he is the master of that, pretty much that exact situation. Super, super slow march. Wait for your opponent to like break under the pressure and then just finish short. Okay, nice. Uh, changing the tempo there on that attack by Clybrink. And yeah, Garazzo yeah. is dead to rights. There we go. He, he just let him get too close without doing something. And then he yep. had all the options. Uh, Clybrink, that is, had all the options. Also, also, it's uh, very interesting to compare Clybrink's, the footwork of Clybrink's attack compared to his defense. Like, this is him on defense. He's very bouncy, but as soon as he starts to march and get close, he's a lot more uh, stable with his feet and wider on guard. Mm. It's very wide on guard, yeah, and then very occasionally he, he just comes out with that bang, bang, bang march that we all know. Yep. Well, I guess you can't Ooh, really call Grazzo it tries an attack off the line. More of a, of a just absolute... <laughs> it's more of a gallop, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Okay, Garasso marches again. He was inches away with that stop. Man. Yeah. Beautiful from That was super close. Oh, but Garasso finds it. Clybrink, I think, lingered in distance a little too long. I think he may have been uh, a little bit greedy when looking for that stop hit, and he couldn't find the blade or get away in time. Garasso finds a way through. Now, this is something... Um, Garasso is actually pretty weak right off the line. That's probably his like worst situation, mm. uh, all told, in like, all of his bouts. Um, so here he tries to parry a post right away, and he gets the parry, but Clybrink just steps in with Ramiz. Grazzo can't land it. Uh, but in general, going right off the line against Grazzo is a relatively safe bet compared to trying to deal with this uh, very deadly march. Yes. There it is again, yeah. Yeah, you're right about that. I'd say that's one of the reasons Ickton managed to pull out the win against him at the CIP. Oh, yeah. He was willing to contest with him in the middle. Yeah, if Garazzo can figure out like a reliable game plan for the offline situation, I feel like he'd be literally unstoppable. <laughs> I think you're right. Um, but Clybrink is giving him a run for his money here. Ooh. Yeah, the hoppity hoppity, and now he's getting low, just like you said. Yep. Very stable, and he presses forward. Oh, he has to give it up, though. Staying very close. Oh, man, that was Inches so close. Away. Oh, and blast him. Great acceleration. Yeah. Who could have predicted uh, just a running attack from them? <laughs> I don't know if Clybrick himself predicted it until it was too late. There's an element of like, um, there, there's like the Germans are so experienced in general. They probably like their bodies just do stuff for them without them really needing to figure things out on their own. Because mm. uh, any situation you give them, they will have seen like dozens and dozens of times in their career. Uh, yeah, when you think that Yaffe used to be a junior, he's yeah. been doing this for a long time. Oh yeah. Oh, barely out of distance he there. He didn't even move his arm. Clever could start. To, to stop it, he just knew. Oh, and there's... Like I said before, it's pretty rare for Clyburn to pull out that type of counterattack, but in that situation, it's the right call. It's a really great looking one as well. Uh, and yeah. you can only do it with a right-handed versus left-handed uh, matchup, I think. Oh yeah, that close-out in, in six is crucial. Uh, almost looks like Saber. It's beautiful. Yeah. Now I've got Sunita versus Avola. This will be, uh, I think, a little quicker one. Sunita is uh, the youngest of the top three Germans um, and has quite a bit more, I guess, youthful vigor and enthusiasm. Um, he tends to be pretty fast and loose 
kind of a la maybe Toldo or uh, oh yeah yeah that's... maybe even Yavador. I um, agree. I think you compared him to Meinhardt previously because um, he's got this very like oh yes on the advance when he's like whoop, like hopping almost floating yeah like you say. Um, Meanwhile, Vola is like Mr. Stable and Consistent and Slow. Um, Mr. Slow. <laughs> yep. Oof. So this will be very much a clash of styles, I think. Like, that's this is like his typical uh, speed going forward, honestly. Super slow. Oh, Sunita, wow. Great play. Hits over the shoulder. It's big, but it's so yeah. fast. Yeah, precision with the Germans is always relative. Um, but there, again, off the line. That's a situation that uh, Volo tends to be quite a bit better at than his teammate Garazzo, so I'm kind of impressed that Sunita was able to find that. There, as you see, more bouncing forward from Sunita. Yeah, that's the hop in particular that uh, made me think of Meinhardt. Mm -hmm. Just a bit of waving the uh, blade a bit to entice them in, and then... Uh, but you already are actually prepared. Oh, that could go either way, I think. It goes left off target. Okay, Sunita did kind of do a body feint, as you saw there, right before. So that potential maybe for that to be called attack, no, but the referee didn't see it that way. Now, Vola, um, okay. So when Avola's running away from this, he, you can see he's making very, very small steps and being very precise with exactly what the distance is. Uh, but that means he doesn't have as good acceleration to just run away flat out if Sunita really accelerates. On the other hand, he can get away with stuff like that when Sunita's not ready. Yeah. This is a very different feel of this bout from the, the first two, for sure. Yeah. Oh, there it is again. Love again, that's precise footwork is all you really need to set that up. Um, there was no real blade trickery at all there by either fencer. That was just really good distance. Okay, Sunita escapes. That's got to be Sunita's, I feel. Oh, really? Open line. It felt like it was way a bit close and a bit uh, early of a finish from Sunita to make that point of line, but we'll see. So it's possible because Sunita is getting away so fast. Um, it may be, yeah, I guess it is. Sunita must have gotten away so far with his uh, first few retreats that by the time he got back into distance, it was a properly established line. That's an interesting call, though. No one can use it like Avila, though. Oh, yeah. Lovely pyre cost. So fast. His hand is just so fast. <laughs> I know. It's blisteringly fast. And it's also a classic uh, lefty-righty touch. It's like a big circle six and then hit the flank. Uh, but he hit Avila's arm, I think. Mm. That's true. That time, it's Sunita who rushes a bit. Although... Giorgio's unable to find a green light. Goes off target, I think, on the mask. After you hit the flank, what's the move? I know you're a lefty. Well, if you hit the flank, you just uh, turn around and congratulate yourself <laughs> on a job well done. Uh, if you miss the flank, then um, there's a couple options. You could go preem, you could go behind the head uh, if you're close. Um, I'm actually... I kind of like going for the flank again, because typically people assume that you're not going to go at the same line twice. Ah. Um, Although it really depends on the relative like distance and body positioning. Like if someone's already twisting way to the outside, I'm probably not going to tr keep trying to reach all the way around their arm. This is the secret of the lefties. Very nice. Oh yeah, they're lefties. As a matter of fact, when lefties start fencing, you get a little handbook that has all the like stupid trickery stuff you can do um, <laughs> that we're not allowed to share with righties. It's a true story. Okay. Looks like Volo's adjusting his distance a little bit wider now. Which is probably smart, given how quick Sunita can get going. And that lets him stay alive in that blade work situation Only that he exchange. probably would have lost before. Oh. The real problem here for uh, Giorgio is that Sunita has pulled him short with no problems, basically. Yep. Every time. Oh, that time he just missed, though. <laughs> yeah, I think that was the one time he tried for a counterattack instead of uh, yeah. <laughs> pulling him short. Yeah, Sunita is not as flashy with his counterattacks as, uh, say, Yopik, but... Oh, Jesus. Um, but he can pull them out definitely when he needs to. Um, especially because Sunita likes to fence so fast, if his opponent kind of increases their speed to match him, um, sometimes he can be more comfortable at that speed, and it's easier for him to counterattack. 
But it looks like Evola's sure. trying to keep things in his comfort zone. Really uh, pushing the attack there. Yep. Nice. And again, Cindy goes a little too fast that time, I feel. Only able to find an off target. That was really well timed. I'm impressed that he managed to find an off target. Yeah. I, <laughs> he definitely made the best of a bad situation. Just like, oh shit, I'm hitting him on the leg or something. <laughs> Sanita keeps pushing oh. a lot slower by Sanita that time. The finish was all Is there. that still a touch or was was there core core? Mm -hmm. I'd be kind of surprised if they gave it. Yeah, that was a. Ooh. Oh, a city yellow card for covering target. And it's a card. That's unfortunate. Um, it's great for Sanita though. He is, though to be fair, he is up 14 8, so. Oh dear. <laughs> What was that you said about pulling him short? But this time this, the script is flipped. Yeah. Um, he he uh, just sticks his arm out at exactly the right time. Out of the... Yeah. That's very aggressive right. there. Very, very aggressive. Now, pushing Sunita to the end, I think, is actually a pretty good call, because his d defense tends to rely a lot on distance and running away super fast. So if you can take away that option for him, uh, it would be better. But Sunita pushes him right back. Still can't find the target. They gave that one. Interesting. <laughs> also, pretty critically, uh, Germans are leading 14 to 9 right now, so very nice show by them so far. Yeah, I, um, it was, what was it, 4? 5, it was 5 2. So they were up three mm -hmm. when uh, Japik finished. Now they're up five. Yep. So uh, Sanita's actually, I think, given them a bit of a lead. Yeah, although Vola has been pulling it back a little bit more recently. Um, but the longer this lead goes on, the more impactful it's going to be. Yeah, so you would truly despise having to uh, chase Japik, of all people. Yeah. Okay. Oh, oh in the hand must have again. In the hand there. That's <laughs> that's rough. He was, I think, uh, aside from that, coming out pretty well in that late exchange, though. Oh yes, the pirate pass uh, isn't doesn't seem very effective against him at the moment. Yeah. Um, also, Sanita, you can kind of tell when he gets in that situation. He's so mobile and so quick that he tends to like move in and out with every blade exchange. Um, but in general. It's a lot quicker to move your hand than your feet, so Sunita can actually end up being a little bit late. Because um, mm. he has to wait for his feet to get him back to where he wants to be before he can really put the blade on. I'm very curious to see him uh, at the Olympics. Oh yeah, that'll be fun. Uh, the Germany have uh, qualified first Olympics, I think. Yeah. And No, yeah, definitely the first Olympics for Sunita and... Yeah, he's, he's, he's pulled out some results over the years, so he could do pretty well. Yeah, definitely. If he can fence like he is today, I think he'd have a really good shot. Okay. Point of line set up by Sunita. Interesting idea. It does kind of force the distance to be wide, but he misses oh, again damn, as he finishes. That was unlucky. Uh, I really thought that a light was going to come on for that one, actually. Yeah. But fair play from Avila. Hmm. On the other hand, only 18 seconds left, so Sunita... Although the waiting game isn't really his strong suit in terms of like his fencing style. Yeah. Um, Strange he to could say, try and just he's waste one of the German here. fencers. But it's true. Um, he, he's yeah, point of line, I think he is just trying to delay as long as he can. Oh, oh tries that uh, deep prim finish, but no dice. He thinks it was a weapon. I think he was just slightly short with it. Just didn't quite reach the limit. Nice acceleration by Sunita, but his blade's out of alignment and counterattack for Evola again. I like, like that one very much. Oh, yep. Now they're going to give it up. Yeah, now Sunita wants to give it up at least. I don't know if Evola will. Yeah, okay. So, 14-10. Not as bad as it could be for the Italians. Um, although definitely, I think the Germans have proven their uh, uh, experience here with this uh, pretty consistent lead so far. Yeah. And now it's Clybrink Faconi. I had a question for you, actually. I just reminded myself there. Uh, do you have any plans to do uh, a Tokyo breakdown? I know your Rio breakdown was incredible. Um, 
that depends on where I am in my life when Tokyo happens. Fair it enough. has been delayed. Fair enough. Um, which is, I think, a little bit fortunate for me, honestly, because right now I probably wouldn't be able to do that much with it. Um, I can definitely get the raw footage again, and uh, I'll almost certainly do something. I don't know if I'll be able to do something of the same like scope of the um, Rio bouts, but... Yeah, that we'll cross that bridge when we come to it, I think. In the meantime, very smooth start for Faconi. That That's like his, uh, his uh, if not his most effective action, the one that stands out the most of his fencing. He starts so slow, and by the time he's finishing, like you don't even know that you had to have gotten away by, like, by then. Yes, that, that incredibly smooth launch. And it, it's so yep. funny looking, because when you watch it, it looks like the other fencers just stand still and do nothing, and let themselves get hit. Yeah. Uh, they just don't realize it. That is coming. Yeah, it's it's super deceptive. Like you'd imagine, if someone's coming at you with the foil extended, like you'd probably want to get away. But with Faconi, it's just like, oh, don't worry about it. I'm just right here. And then all of a sudden, the lights on. And you're like, wait, what? Clybring, though, I think has a pretty um, good toolkit for this. His stop hit's so good that um, if Faconi is even a tiny bit late with that slow start, uh, Clybring could just get one light. Yeah. Oh, it tries a bunch of stuff at the end. Incredible. Very nice. Just amazing. Behind the head touch as he steps to the side, yeah. The classic climb rink behind the head. Mm -hmm. I love it. Okay, both come together. Climb tried that same touch again. I think Faconi's probably going to be wise to it now, though. So again, Faconi's slow start. This is classic him. Clybrink again, very stable when he's attacking, much looser when he's defending, as you see right now. Mm, indeed, yeah. Point line set up by Faconi. Which you, Ooh, you rarely see for him, actually. Distance. That's true, yeah. Uh, Faconi and... Um, actually, really, the Italians in general are very big on the very quick parry post as a main defensive tool. Uh, they sometimes set it up with point line, but it's usually just... Uh, without setup at all. They just do it super quick. Oh, that is interesting. So it's, uh, we've been seeing a little bit more of this in foil overall recently. More just like super strong lunges into the preparation in hopes of getting one light. Yeah, that's true. Lovely. That time though, Clyric just <laughs> runs for going out of space and hits. And the crowd, of course, are loving that. Oh yeah, this is a very supportive crowd for the Germans. There's that stop that I mentioned before. It goes off target. Mm. I think but actually, yeah, Faconi was a little bit. I might make a Benjamin Clybrink stop hit compilation. That could be fun. That'd be that'd be amazing. I'd love to see that. Nice finish. From That's Faconi. though Faconi with the four flick. Yeah. And we we all know that when it comes to flicking, he's probably the best fencing right now. Probably yeah. Also, there is definitely an element. Oh, Clybrink wants a halt. Uh oh. Oh, yes. This is when he uh, injures his hand. Oh, yeah, through. I remember this. Oh, dear. But uh, but doesn't stop the bout, which is incredible. Yeah. I, I personally, as a, as a coach especially, I cannot uh, support that decision. But um, this is a pretty important championship for the team, so he's going to try and stick it out, I think. Clybrink's no stranger but. to uh, fencing injured either. Yeah, it is always painful to watch With though. All the mishaps that have occurred over the years too. All right, Clybrink's still using kind of the same style of attack, very low, which probably would aggravate that injury even more. And meanwhile, I think Faconi's already like, like crunching the numbers in his head, like, okay, he's injured. This is my time to strike. Oh yeah, you know, I, I love the way that Faconi, uh, when he gets that one minute break in bouts on the sidelines, he just sits with a towel on his head. Oh yeah, and <laughs> plots <laughs> while his coach yeah. says you things can, to him. You can kind of imagine like that um, that TV show Sherlock, where um, Benedict Cumberbatch is just surrounded by like numbers and words popping up all over his head with CGI. Yeah. That's how I imagine Faconi in every break. It's quite a talent to have. Can't really... Yeah. We'll see. Let's... Um, there's a five-point lead that Faconi could potentially eat away at uh, due to Clybrink's injury here. Yeah, he... Um, perfect setup like, for him. 
Clevering's now injured, yeah. although he, to be honest, he looks great. I have to say, look at him. And you can't underestimate Clybrink's sheer <laughs> hand speed as well. Uh, he had that <laughs> an injured Clybrink, and then he's had a little bit of time to plot as well. So the, the the recipe is there for him to come back. Although that said, that was a ducking counterattack by Clybrink to set that up, and I'm not sure he'll be able to keep doing that reliably as his uh, injury uh, starts to tell. Mm. One, two, okay, three. stationary parry post by Ficoni. Uh, another cheeky stop hit. That's also an interesting idea by Clybrink, because if he's uh, injured, he doesn't want to have to run away too much. So a stop hit stops the phrase right there. Yeah, oh, look at that lunge. Yeah. That's, oh, that's painful. <laughs> On the other hand, like Clybrink can almost certainly do a super quick second intention off of that, oh, so yeah. you can't take that at face that's value. suspicious looking. <laughs> yeah. Only uh, you'd have to have a death witch to do some kind of simple action into that against someone yeah. like Clivering. There it is again. Kony's being very patient here with this response. He's not rushing at all. Let's see. Clivering is again on the ropes. On the back line, it's like honestly kind of fine because Clivering isn't going to go anywhere anyway. Um, again, that lunge. Looks pretty uh, painful, but it's also pretty deceptive. Mm. Fikoni is trying to find a way through. He's wasting a lot of time here, Fikoni is, honestly. He's working hard, That's, but um, yeah, nothing nothing coming from him. Yeah. Uh, referee says the clapping stops. Yeah. And I can see it, to be honest. But uh, he, he made yeah. him work for like a minute for that point. That is very true, despite being injured. Um, I do kind of feel like that might be a little bit on Fikoni as well, though. Um, the Italians tend to be pretty cautious, um, especially when fencing the Germans, but if you're down in score and you have like a minute to get five touches, you kind of have to go a little bit faster just to um, give yourself more chances to turn a light on. Um, but Ficoni isn't doing that. Mm. On the other hand, it is still uh, only the fourth period, so there's still plenty of chances to do that in the future. As but... of being Alessio Ficoni, you are almost every single time the favorite in a one-to-one -one draw, so in theory, you could... <laughs> attack and try to force In theory, yeah. I mean, his, his world ranking is higher than Clyvrink's. That is true. But Clyvrink, even injured, is putting on a great show with just his hand. And there it is, yeah. I did hear a blade contact, but it looked more like it was Clyvrink's beat than Fakoni's parry. Oh, no, the referee changes it to Coney's parry post off target. I Only two seconds left, though, and there. still... Very disappointed with yeah. that. But, yeah, that's the end, as you say. Maintains the five-point lead, which is very nice. And, uh, look, Coney's actually, I think, disappointed with that one. And you can see yeah, why. Yeah, he had a he had a bit of a chance there to uh, make a lot more stuff happen against an injured Clybrink, but... Oops, something happened unable to the, really capitalize. Uh, score box there. Uh-oh. At least we have it on the bottom. And now Yapa Cavola. This, so this is a um, <laughs> a rematch of, among other things, the Rio Olympics. Um, yeah, that bout at the Olympics was potentially the most intense bout of that entire competition, except for Avola versus Maciel. Yeah, <laughs> this guy just um, amazing bouts just happened to him for some reason. <laughs> um, but in his bout with Yapik at Rio, um, we saw things get super, super slow and controlled. Um, which is kind of what we're seeing right now. Um, Yopik's counterattack is so dangerous that um, Avola really doesn't want to rush. And likewise, Avola's so good at parry post that Yopik really doesn't want to rush. So we kind of get into this very slow back and forth of just like one tiny distance mistake by either one would probably be enough to um, cause the, the, the distance to collapse and something to happen really quickly. But as it is now, it's very much a waiting game. Yeah. <laughs> okay, now Vola goes faster. Oh, oh no! Wow. Oh, that light was, was super late. I didn't know he got that. that first yeah, I thought he missed. <laughs> Incredible. Very nice, uh, and very quick hand speed by Yopik. The god of infighting, Yopik. Oh yeah. There's that parry post, though. That is his classic um, defensive option. 
And mm -hmm. even though the distance was pretty close, which normally would favor Yopek, that um, his hand is just so good. Oh. Oopsies. He had two shots of that. Ridiculous. Yep. Uh, the dude. Man. How, how do you <laughs> even learn to counterattack like that? It's not really something that's learned, honestly. It's something that, like... <laughs> There is an element of just um, having a good eye for that sort of thing, and also just tons of experience. You have to go up uh, with the old, you know, uh, sorcerer to the mountain stream and do a counterattack ritual, and then yeah. you come down and you're good at counterattacks. It's the only way. That's basically it. A little bit faster there, Bifold, but Yopik tries to counterattack without really too much preamble, and that distance didn't feel great for him. So yeah, I think this yeah. is a pretty rare case of him making a mistake on uh, that counter offense. So uh, that this is good, good, uh, good work from Italy uh, uh, to bring back the score. Yep, still within five, so definitely doable. Because yeah, there hasn't been a dramatic. Um, How do you call that event? So far to throw it in favor of the Germans, but they have just slowly ground their way to a lead that's actually pretty good. Except yeah for right now you know a point here a point there two points here two points there that's all you need yeah now um Avola did win their bout at Rio I don't know if they've seen each other much since then um but right now it's looking like um history's kind of repeating itself Avola is doing quite a bit better in this period against Yopik uh on the other hand uh Yopik went into it with the lead that he can all he really needs to do is maintain it that time, Avola doesn't even find the blade. Despite having a super quick uh, pair of posts, as you can see, Yopik just dances around it. The offense, I guess, might favor him more in this bout then, because Avola's been able to force it through. Ah. Oh, jeez. Oh, lovely. As you say, Yopik is a god of infighting. Yeah, that, that. Just block it with the shoulder and then hit him behind your own head. It's yep. easy, guys. <laughs> yeah, you can't just do that on a win whenever you want when you're fencing. That's um Yeah, that this this is the type of action that like there's not really a formal way of teaching this, um in like the classical fencing coaches um paradigm. This is something you just have to figure out. Um, through years of experience and experimentation. Yeah, and the funny thing is that really the best way to master infighting is to fence people who are amazing at infighting. <laughs> yeah. Because if I you, mean, that's you how continually I it. get flattened up close, you like you eventually learn some tricks. Yeah, I, I had a friend. Literally, we just we'd start fencing with our bell guards crossed already, and he just like on guard ready fence, and then we'd both try and um, hit as best we could. And at first he would just hit me every time, and then eventually I started to hit him like 20% of the time. Ah, um, yeah, there we go, that's fair enough. So like, <laughs> but like I said, you, you kind of have to just figure that stuff out on your own. There's not much that a, um, like a formal coaching will, will help you with in that. Infighting is a very personal thing. Mm. Oh <laughs> man, a bull tries that. The distance it's a cross is between like slamming shot in this bout now. Yeah. Which, ordinarily, I would say that would favor Yopik, because that's his real playground, but... Um, I've also been keeping it pretty close. Still a six-point lead, so slightly better for Yopik, but... Let's see. 16-22, mm, and they came in, yeah. So, he hasn't, uh, he hasn't given away too many points, and there's only 50 seconds left. Yep. That really seems to be the issue that keeps biting the Italians in this match. They just don't have the time to win. Yep. That's one thing. The, so the Italians are um, probably like individual for individual one of the top teams right now, but they don't do as well in team matches, and I think that's a partially the reason. They tend to fence so cautiously that um, when they really need to score a lot of points in a row, they tend to struggle a bit. And we're kind of seeing that here to a point, although it's not that bad of a lead yet. Oh, oh, oh. dear. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> that should have been halt way before that, though. So, very nice touch eventually, but unfortunately, it's not going to count for anything. 
Oh, Yopik had his blade way back. I'm surprised if Ola did get a counterattack there. That's a pretty dangerous way to attack uh, the Italians. Nice broken time. But yes, especially Ola. Okay, Yopik starts again. Lots of tempo changes. Able to counter time in with Prem Ramiz again. Okay. Yeah, he's really uh, stuttering his attacks. Makes it very hard to choose when to counterattack if you're trying to. Yeah, I'm kind of surprised by the fact that uh, Avala, is, he's one of the masters of attack and prep. He uses it probably the most out of most people on the strip. He didn't really try it. Oh, that. that is beautiful. It's like nice a beat flick. two flick to the shoulder. Very nice. With only two seconds left, I'm not sure he can get anything else done. And yeah, exactly a five point lead, just as uh, with the previous encounter, so pretty much nothing gained there by either. Yep, but there is something they've lost, and that is uh, an opportunity to bring it back. That's exactly right. As we said earlier, Sunita, not as much of a, a stall master as Clybrink or Yafi. So Yeah, I think if Sunita is going to. On the other hand, against Garazzo, I don't know. There is some potential for Sunita to just run away with this if he can attack off the line like eight times in a row. But Like you said, uh, yeah, Garazzo, the, the one big opportunity you, that you people have on him is off the line. Mm -hmm. For some strange reason. I'm not really sure why. Well, I mean, his marching attack is so deadly, he just wins if you don't. Um, at least By that's what I chalk it up to. It's, 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 it's still, he's still amazing in the middle. He's just unbelievable once he starts marching, I guess, is the yeah. situation. It's, with him, it's like if you try and fence him, you have a higher chance of losing than if you just play rock, paper, scissors against him. Um, ah. Very nice analogy. I like that. Yeah, I mean, any, if anyone can beat you in fencing, you could still technically beat anyone in rock, paper, scissors. So it's a choice. But it looks like Sunita is giving him a pretty easy start to his attack. Let's see. If he tries to break Ooh. in, Sunita is able to tangle up the blade, though. Mm. He might actually be in the mentality of trying to delay and stall it out, and hence uh, yeah. his defensive actions here. Let's see if his defense is up to scratch, though. Grazzo's notoriously hard to defend against when he gets that march going. Eww. Finds an off target there. Oh. Okay. I still but, don't uh, really fancy Sunita's chances on the very end, though. He tends to be so mobile that... I feel like not being able to run away is taking a pretty big chunk out of his defensive options. Garatha did seem to be running the show in that particular touch. Yep. Oh! Ooh. Still goes to the left. Okay, makes sense. That did actually feel like it was kind of a compound um, attack in preparation by Garatha that time. It was kind of a feint before he committed. So it makes sense that Costa to this attack there. That is a very subtle distinction, though. Hmm. Um, yeah. They need a second. What's up? Uh, I guess he's just delaying the bath. <laughs> Alright, so Garazzo keeps marching. Sunita with the point of line set up, or just offering the blade? Okay. So that was... Turns it around. Oh, Garazzo Ooh. looked like he was covering target there for a little bit. I don't think the ref saw it, though. Um, one point and 35 seconds. So far, so good for Sunita, you have to say. Yep. Um, yeah, he could... I imagine he thinks he could do this all day. I'm not sure if Grazzo is going to uh, amp up the pressure, though, with this march. Still going super slow. slow. and steady. Oh, this is dangerous. Okay, Grazzo can't find a way through, though. Okay. So, surprisingly, kind of, it does seem that Sunita is feeling fine on the back line there. Because uh, Grazzo hasn't really been able to finish cleanly into him. Yeah, turns it into a messy infighting situation, which is uh, not as heavily favored for Grazzo. Yeah, definitely. Oh, that is amazing. Grazzo's a little too passive with the first step there. And that's all the excuse that he needs to crush in on him. Yeah, he's been so defensive this whole time, back to back. I guess he wasn't expecting just a sudden counterattack. But yeah, 2-0, right? Damn. Yeah, very nice. It, it's This is not good for Grazzo. Yeah. He's got to figure out how to finish into that. That's, there it is, yeah. <laughs> and Sunita keels over. Lovely. I had just, just a little bit of extra pressure knocks him over. Um, yeah. And that time, good. you could tell Sunita not being able to get away was a pretty big um, issue there for Sunita. 
Um, if he'd had another couple steps behind him to make, he probably could have escaped that finish by Garazzo. There, tries an attack off the line. That's a good idea, but Garazzo parries. Ooh, nice. And finds really a way nice. through. And yeah, in that situation, that's always going to be Garazzo's. Looks for the parry, but it wasn't there. Yeah. The blade wasn't there. The, um... Ah, off the line. That's good. That's good. Yep. Yeah, very nice. As you can see there, Garazzo, like, when Garazzo makes an attack off the line, he tends to be a lot more marchy with it than uh, most, so a very strong straight attack will usually have right away. Uh, that's what Sinead took advantage of there. That time, though, Garazzo comes out on top with the infighting. Hmm. He's pretty damn good at it, to be honest. Yeah. I have a feeling that, that he built that up because um, he was so marchy in practice that so many people just crushed the distance on him constantly. He had to figure out, like... Uh, a get out of jail free card for that situation, so he just got really good at infighting to compensate. Fair enough, yeah, it's, 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 it's a necessary evil. Yeah. Makes you wonder, defenders who aren't as good at infighting, they must have a slightly different system. I'd imagine so. In general, you never like go into about planning to infight, unless I guess you're Lepeshu or a Korean. Um, <laughs> I love all the different ways there is to uh, run like a fencing system or a tactical system you know yeah and really we're seeing that uh, to great effect here you can tell the germans and the italians have very different approaches at the super high strategic oh. level oh dear that was rough does that touch go through that could have been jostling that <laughs> did kind of look like sinita punched garazzo to the ground <laughs> i'm sure it wasn't intentional though okay it's just a core core call before the touch that's fine Still a five point lead exactly, so again, nothing lost or gained, except an opportunity. And about half the period left. Right, so again, having trouble finding a way to finish mm. into that. We're seeing Sunita's lovely uh, parry bang flank again. Yep. Oh. Ooh. Does he need to find the blade there? Too late. Ref says no. Okay. Okay. But yes, that, I, I agree with you. There are definitely high level differences between. Germany's approach and Italy's approach. But they both work. Let's see. Another attempted attack off the line by Sinita. Garazzo saw it coming and got away. And we're back to this again. Yep. Oh, that, uh, uh, that oh. Uh, flash of speed from Garazzo. Yeah. He does that quite a lot. Um, if his opponent doesn't get away too fast, he can just finish at that speed. Um, if they do, he just slows down again. And it's like some free real estate on the strip. <laughs> Free real estate. Oh yeah, that's a meme. Uh, I always accidentally like say memes when I'm commentating and people point it out after the fact. Alright, so Garazzo is slowly narrowing the gap now. 21 to yeah, 25. 21 to 25. That's good. I mean... Mm -hmm. Oh, oh no. though. That back and forth blade situation. Really nice. Yeah. Sinita's hand speed is superior. I was kind of surprised not to see uh, Kassara in the lineup for this bout. Oh yeah, I'm pretty sure he was the Italian's alternate, wasn't he? But, Actually, I'm uh, not sure if he was there. I didn't see him off to the side at all. When you think, oh, we need someone to attack and bring it back, Kassara attacks. And he attacks pretty fast, you know? That's true. Even faster than Garoso. Yeah, I don't know... Um, if the Italians have a four... Oh, again, off the line. Very nice for Sunita there. Wow. Garazzo was Look pretty weak in that situation. Look at the amazing amount of distance he covered with that one. That was almost like... He, <laughs> yeah, he's so explosive. He, like, gets oh, to the um, the other on-guard line in, like, a double advance lunge. Oh. <laughs> again, again, same thing. So maybe I, I called it a little bit earlier with that just multiple attacks off the line to uh, pull ahead. That's, oh, yeah. The, he... he nope. uh, how, what can Garazzo do now? Well, a uh, couple possibilities. It looks like he's still trying to find a way to start that march. And counter time! Oh, off target though. So close. 
Yeah, Sunita was really struggling there. You could see he like ran out of options to just fell full of blade. Um, if Grazzo maybe is even a little more patient than that, he probably could have found something. Um, but again, less than a minute left, and Grazzo's got to find a way to bring the scores back. Um, hmm. That was a good idea there, but off target. Unlucky. Yep. It's gotten pretty unfortunate with a few of those, this uh, encounter. Oh my god! <laughs> How does he yeah, do that? incredible hit. Like, does a split and then also a stop hit without moving backward against Garazzo of all people? That is... That is insanity. And now a seven-point lead for the Germans. Even uh, in international fencing, there aren't that many people who could pull off a hit like that. Yeah. And they're in good shape and pretty flexible. Mm hmm So Grazzo's really got to figure out something here. Yeah. It'd be good in f to, if uh, Foyle had those incredible backline pulls that Sabre had. I've always thought they were oh, yeah. amazing. The issue kind of is Foilers tend to be a little bit more cautious, so they don't push their opponent as hard as they could, especially when they're out of space. Um, yeah. Except in this situation. Uh, again, just need to try some tack off the line. Great move, Still but... Close. It almost target. worked perfectly, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Grazzo doing the Italian hand thing. <laughs> yeah, just standing there. <laughs> yep. It helps you fence. Oh yeah, fence. yeah. <laughs> if you can, if you can convince the the referee that you're Italian by doing that, then they'll be more likely to give you uh, the touch. Um, let's see. Grazzo still trying to find a way to march. Tries Isn't to stop it. Uh, uh, a rare stop it attempt from Grazzo. Yeah, against Sunita of all people, I don't feel like that's a great move. Uh, Sunita is so explosive, he can just catch you if you try it. That's oh, interesting. Nothing. That's a shame. I think Sunita just uh, grounded his foil out, because he hit yeah. so deeply. That was well set up, too. Mm -hmm. But these things happen at, uh, at some point in about, you know? Yeah. Even it's something every fencer has dealt with at some point. Oh, the ref is uh, just... Informing Sanita that he would call it for Grotto if it, the light had gone okay. off. So that's interesting. Interesting, yeah. Okay, Grotto keeps even. marching. Ooh. Again, it looks like counter time idea as Sanita tries to crush in on him. Nice that the ref would explain that to the uh, to the fencer. Yeah. He has confidence in his call. Mm -hmm. Again, off the line, Sanita. Uh, it's very superior. Yep, now it's Garotto's turn to have no light. And yep. seven point lead. So this is getting a little bit dicier for the Italians now. With only yeah, reached um, the stage of incredible comeback <laughs> territory. Yeah. yeah. There's not much you can do that doesn't involve an incredible comeback at this point. Yeah, you, you uh, now we are seeing Lewis Klein. Kind of what? Sorry? Now now we're seeing Lewis Klein come out. Oh that's um, right, yeah. Sorry, you went fuzzy a bit for a second there. Oh, sorry uh, about that. And I must point out, his name is Klein. He's so tall. <laughs> yeah. Very tall. Um, now, if you're a Vola, um, I feel like Klein being a junior is going to have way less experience than the rest of the German squad. Uh, this is probably the moment you really have to pull the trigger and uh, get some points back. You're not going to have a, another chance to fence a relative newcomer. Um, yeah. So, a lot of pressure is going to be on Klein here to not give away a the huge lead that they have. Hmm. Okay. Well, again, being very precise with his footwork when he retreats. Oh. Not and it's just at a pair of post. Yeah. Unfortunate to go off target, but very He's nice so setup. Ooh. Again, that pair of post very fast, but Klein is. Uh, so he's so tall that his finish is a little out of distance, and that's all he needs. Very nice! Ooh, surprisingly close finish, yeah. From him. Yep. How would you... Who, who, of the other German fences, who does he remind you the most of, in your opinion? Klein? Yeah. Uh, I don't really know. I don't know if any of his uh, teammates, at least at the super high level, are this tall. Um, I'd say yeah. he kind of favors a like righty version of Clybrink, if anything, just because his height would... Um, Lean more towards stop it. That time, it's a parry post, though. Tough fire post. Well, uh, uh, once that badly. 
Yeah, he says he took it back. Now, I, I did hear two blade contacts there. I couldn't tell what the order was, if it was Klein's uh, parry first or if it was um, Avola's beat first. But we'll see. Avola's pretty adamant that he took it back, so I'd imagine this would uh, switch to him. But we'll see. Ow! Stay for this call. Yeah, goes to five. Uh, to five. Now, if you're Klein, I feel like you want to get this bout over with as fast as possible to not give Alola a chance to uh, get a lot of touches. I feel like uh, uh, Alola had an opportunity there, but he didn't press it. Yeah, he is being searching. typically Italian. He is being very cautious still against a probably an unknown opponent. I don't know if the Italians have ever seen uh, Louis Klein before in any of their bouts. Yeah, and that could be, you know. The unknown factor. Yeah. And again, because Italian... He doesn't Italian... look like one of the other Germans, really. Uh, that, as yeah. you said, he's pretty unique. They're like, oh shit, <laughs> what do we do? <laughs> yeah, and again, the Italians like to take quite a bit of time to figure out what's going on in the bout before they really push their advantage. Um, so the longer that Avola waits around and tries to figure out what's going on, the less time he's going to have to really make a bunch of comeback touches happen. There's already a minute gone, and another touch for Klein. Mm. Brilliant. That was, very, again, a very close finish from him. Uh, I like it. Yeah, you wouldn't expect that, considering his height. But he's making it work. <laughs> very deep on guard there. Okay, Avola gives him plenty of space. Finds a way through. Ooh, That's probably going to be Avola's counter post, yep. <laughs> Lots of shouting from both teams off to the sides. Oh, that is nice from Avola, but he misses and goes off target. Oh, there it is. Okay. There that five, is another classic so touch. Well, pretty well for him so far. Yeah. Uh, in this bow. He really likes that touch. Mm. It's funny. Oh, what a oh, nice man. timing. <laughs> that that duck is like perfect. Yeah, when also I, when I see... height. Sorry, what? No, go ahead. When I see you're such a tall fence, they're like fine. For some reason. I just expect them to fence like Miles Stanley Watson. <laughs> I think I've watched too much of them. <laughs> Oof, again! Follow with a very quick parry or post. Incredible distance. Yeah. Now I think he's got a better feel for the distance that Klein's finishing at, which makes it easier for him to set up a parry post. Now that, uh, you could almost call that a proper flesh by Volo. He, he is one of the few foilists who actually has very good technique when they do that. Unfortunately, kind of flicked with it and went off target. Yeah, he'll actually, uh do the thingy with the crossing his legs instead of making just a running attack. Yeah. Which is nice, you know. Good photos. Yep, very. <laughs> okay, there were two blade contacts there that I heard distinctly. Mm, yeah, Who does we'll this go to? The ref says. I think the ref's checking of their own volition. The more I think about it and play it back in my head, the more I think this goes to Klein. It looked like he was like taking a pretty solid circle six on the way in. No. Yep. It would be big if it went to Avola though, because it's twenty eight thirty three. Yep. But still, they He's haven't just on really the edge of bringing it back. It's Parapost left. Yep. There we go. Italians still haven't been able to break inside that five point uh, differential. And now Klein only needs one to uh, end this bout and prevent Avola from coming back any farther. Tries. Oh, Avola missed the repost to the shoulder. Oh man, that is critical. Klein acquits himself super well against a very uh, top tier Italian. That is yeah, very impressive yeah, fencing very by the new guy. From Klein. What, a, what a showing. Not many people could stand toe to toe with Avola and just scrape out five touches like he did there. High pressure, big crowd, home crowd, you know, in the uh, semi final, and he did well. Yeah. So now we come to Sunita Fakoni. Yeah, potentially the first time these guys have fenced. I'm not fully sure of that. Yeah, I don't remember them fencing each other at all. Um, although I think this will kind of mirror Sunita versus Avola in that um, Sunita likes to be pretty fast and loose and Fakoni very much the opposite. Yeah, Sunita is definitely faster than him. 
on the other hand, Fakoti's point control is like insanely good, so he might be able to actually fence fast and still contend with Sunita re relatively evenly, um, just by virtue of his blade always being in the right place at the right time. But we'll see. Ooh. Oh, not like that, though. Wasn't even sure where he hit there. The light uh, just kind of turned on. <laughs> yeah, Fakoti also finished right into the closed line by Sunita, right into the uh, right into his six. Fencing very diagonally on the strip, which is interesting. Yep. Okay, again, March by Sunita finishes short. I feel like that's Fakoni's. What's the call? I could be wrong about that. Referee says no. It's Sunita's. I think Fakoni, yeah, Fakoni asked for a video review. I was just looking at their feet. I couldn't really tell what the blades were doing. So, um, but purely based on the footwork, I feel like that's still Fakoni's. And the referee agrees. Ref hands it over. Yeah. Mm. There we go. That that strange uh, habit that Fakoni has. He's the only guy who'll take a step back off the line and then come forward. Yeah. I kind of like it though. It's unique. It can work. I mean, Sunita's got such an explosive attack that he could probably still reach Fakoni even if he stepped back off the line. So that's probably smart just to give him some more time to set something up if he needs to. Fakoni, you know, putting on, he's showing some decent speed here. Pulling uh, Sunita short aggressively there. Mm -hmm. uh, and attacking. Oh, unfortunate. That was, I think, a bit of a guess by Sunita to close out the inside line, and Fakoni happened to be finishing there in, uh, with another four flick. Mm. He can afford the guess though, it's 36-29, so unfortunately That is very true. Oh. oh dear. Not another injury. We've already had Clybrink. Germans are running out of alternates, although it is the 8th period, so they're not going to really need to. Um, but given, again, that Sunita's style is so mobile and so fast and loose, having an injury to his foot might hamper that a little bit, make it harder for him to get the acceleration he needs. Yeah. Compared to someone like Yafik. Has Yafik ever been injured? We, we don't um, know. <laughs> it's inconclusive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, even if he is, he doesn't show it at all. Alright, Sunita starts very Ooh, fast. A little too one. fast, I must say. Yep, Fakoni, uh, since he's been hungry on the inside and they've been fencing diagonally, a pretty easy closeout just turning to the side yep. there. Taking the blade. Very nice. Ooh. Relax. So yeah, right. it seems that pretty much everyone who's fencing it has eventually tried to push him to the end. Um, especially Garazzo, but we saw he still had some trouble on the end. Incredible finish. Oh yeah, wow. six preem. Very sick. How did he find it? Amazing. This is, this is a real talent that he has. Just yep. finished from weird, weird angles. Yeah, now you see, just like you said, Fikoni, uh wow. Oh, counter time. Okay. That was a sharp fire pass. Yeah. Just bang. So those Italians with their super quick uh, hand speed. Again, pushing Sunita right back to the end. Grazzo had trouble finishing here. Will Fikoni is the question. Looks like he will. Wow. Yeah. And in fairness, Fikoni couldn't quite finish off uh, Clybrink at the end either. That's true. Yeah. Lovely counter attack. Again, attack off the line by Sunita. He That worked really well against Garazzo. I feel like it won't be as good with Fakoni. Uh, both because, as you said, he tends to step back um, and give himself a lot more space to have uh, room to pair or post. Mm. Ooh. is moving fast, and then that does, in some ways, favor Fakoni at least, so he's, he's got a yeah. chance here. The faster the tempo is though. overall, the more chances he'll have to score. Oh, barely! Wow! wow. Oh, jeez! <laughs> oh man, Tanita exasperated that he wasn't able to get that. There were a couple times when he had Fakoni dead to rights. Really impressive from Fakoni there, actually, just holding on. Yeah. Oh, that's what the the uh, Italian end of the strip looks like. Yep. And wow! Sunita pulls basically touch right out of Fakoni's playbook there. Just off the blade, then super quick, bup bup. Makes it look super easy. And now an 8 point lead, so even more. Pointed line setup. Mm -hmm. oh. 
starts. <laughs> I could, yeah, that, that felt very my heart ish, that attack. Hmm. Oh. Wow! Incredible. He finds, so you can tell he was going circle six, flick to the shoulder, then switched over to preem, but he actually hit the first one that he wasn't expecting to. <laughs> um, so, man. Sunita's really been carrying this German team, I must say. Although they've yeah. all pitched in. He's, they, they, he's performed admirably. Yeah, it feels like the, like the other two have been able to keep the scores consistent, but Sunita's been the one who's contributed most to the lead that they have. And now it comes down to Yopik versus Garazzo. What a match. Yep. So this is going to be Garazzo's super, super good march against Yopik's super, super good counterattack. Very it, much... It uh, feels almost weird watching Garazzo fence Yopik. Yeah. They're just so different. Mm -hmm. It's like they should be fencing in like different weapons. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this will be probably like an unstoppable force uh, versus an immovable object type situation. I don't know which is which for an analogy, but... Nine touches, three touches a minute. A yeah, it's doable, but Grazzo's really going to have to push hard to make it work. And against Yopik, the harder you push, the more likely he's going to get one light with his counterattacks. Yeah, it's true. Uh, unfortunately, the more pressure you put Yopik under, the more diamonds he produces. <laughs> <laughs> I know. And there, yep. Grazzo tries a little too hard to find that, and Yopik, twisty counterattack. Grazzo desperately asks... needs a ducking card here. <laughs> To stay in it's the, game. the only way. We'll see. That one felt. I mean, Yopik has done this enough that. Oh, I think it is a card actually. Yeah, they're starting back okay. where they were. He lives. He survives. Let's do it to fight another point. So yeah, it's one thing to be able to make that counter attack with a twist. It's another to have enough experience to know exactly how much twist you can get away with with the current referee you have. Yeah. Um, Even the true okay. master doesn't always get it right. Yep. Grazzo marches again, gets Yopik to the end, but of course that's no big deal for Yopik. Scraps it's it out, goes off target. Yopic. Yeah. It's so actually a little bit kind of like what Avola was doing earlier. He's being very precise with exactly where he puts his feet on defense. And considering how um, withheld and pretty slow Grazzo's march tends to be, you can get away with that. You don't really need to worry about getting away super fast. Yeah, you can set things up. Yep, like that. Oh, what a nice duck. <laughs> his foil sailed an inch over his shoulder. Damn, that, how, do you, like, how do you hit that? <laughs> if you're Garazzo, it's like, you have 2 minutes 30 seconds to score 11 touches now. That time he gets one. Y'all can try to counterattack off the line. So, 2 minutes 30 seconds-ish to get 10 touches. But like, every time you try and go a little bit fast, Yopik just ducks or he twists or something and you just can't find it. Yeah, the only thing we haven't seen from him so far is a jump. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yopik, very good fighting the blade here. Not that time, though. Grazzo finds a way through. Wow, that was nice. Yeah. Just very precise. Gotta straighten the sock. Yeah. <laughs> yep. I think he's trying to let that touch sink in a little bit as well for Yopik. You're like, yes, that's right. I hit you twice in a row. Deal with it. All right. Grazzo on the march again. Yopik very slowly giving him space. Oh, it breaks takes the it side. Over. Just yeah. attacks. That works twice now. Yeah, so another thing of uh, Garazzo is uh, because he's so confident in his march, he tends not to give it up very easily, and he can often get caught in situations like that where he's like not really sure if it's still his or not. Um, mm, I like the last second parry from Garazzo there. Just thinks better yeah. of it and uh, catches the blade. Yeah, definitely a uh, safer move. It's a nice talent of his, just at the last second turning his march into a parry. Mm -hmm. Doesn't get the card uh, okay. on the optic. At this point, Grazzo is probably going to ask for like every little time he can uh, ask for a card there, just because he really needs the points. Yeah. Okay, Yopik keeps marching, same as before. Accelerates and finishes. That's nice. nice finish. So that that was um, kind of a fast, slow, fast idea. He accelerates. Yopik gives him plenty of space. Slows down. Yopik gets closer, and then Grasso can finish easily. That is really why tempo changing works so well against counterattacks. 
but what's Ref say? Again, off the line is not great for Garazzo. He tends to like not be as committing as uh, his opponent, Ref, so it usually uh, doesn't go to his right away. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it does go to Grazzo. Okay. Tracking Guess the up stops. He says. Yeah. Oh, the crowd are booing. <laughs> <laughs> Very supportive of the Germans. Still, we're back to just an eight point lead, which is <laughs> still pretty bad, but Grazzo yeah. is uh, slowly chipping away. Better than an 11 point lead? There it is again. Off target. Yep. What? Hmm. I was sure that was off target. You know, I actually don't know there, because um, Grazzo's light came on a bit after Yopix, but I'm not sure if that was um, if it came on after or before he actually found the blade. Um, it mm, might have been yes. Malpare for Yopix, or it might not. I don't know. There's always a chance how he's misled by looking at the uh, the stream interface instead of the box. Yep. It's also a game of like literal milliseconds, so. <laughs> Looking at it at normal speed, even if you have like perfect 2020 vision, it can be very hard to parse that out. Okay. 30! Yeah. Oh, Scott okay. Off target. Off target. I'm not going insane. That's good. <laughs> uh, very good. Very good call by you, though. That's not so good for Garazzo, though, because 36.45 would have been nice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let's see, still marching. Yopik still doing the exact same setup, just leaving the blade out. Out of space. Oh, Grasso again finds a way to finish. Uh, yeah. That same low finish, just as Yopik tries to pull away. He's really Like you said, that. though, that could maybe thing. open Yopik up to like go for a jumping counterattack and try and get above the blade. But off the line, Grasso's still pretty weak. Amazing. That was. That looked great. Yeah, that was a. He just comes forward, does a straight direct lunge. With Garazzo, that can just, with Garazzo, that can just work uh, more often than you might expect. Oh, <laughs> a little jumping the gun there. Now Yopik only needs one. Garazzo keeps yeah. pushing. He's so he's so cautious right now. He knows that a single counterattack could end this uh, match right here. Takes uh, the lead. Garazzo come back. There it is. Yep. Delay. I mean, this kind of uh, deficit, but. Like only once. Okay, seven point lead now. Oh wow! How does Yopik miss that? Interesting choice. Like, yeah. Very very brave from Garazzo. Definitely. I guess if you have if the only other alternative is losing the entire thing right now, then you kind of have to go for it. He just does not want to be pushed back for some reason. Uh oh. Oh, that was after the halt. Yeah. Maybe the referee called Hall a bit early there, but still, you have to respect it. <laughs> Garazzo giving him a, 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 a devilish look there. Yeah. 38-44. Yeah, I've seen him come back from this. Did you see that match between uh, Russia and Italy where Garazzo pulled off this oh, yeah. comeback? Yeah. He has it in him. <laughs> yep, he can definitely do it. Oh, no. I feel like that's Garazzo's. We'll see. I did feel yeah, like there was a bit of a pause there by Yopik. You said that Garazzo fighting in the middle is the way to go, but Yopik is not exactly like a middle game master like Clybrink would be. It's just that's not true. something he uses that much. So yeah, actually, we've uh, seen more often than not, we've seen Yopik do a counterattack right off the line, hoping that yes. his opponent will rush. Yep, so Yopik's attack stops, and Garazzo's back within five. So he has pulled it back to where it was earlier uh, today. But can he pull it the rest of the way with uh, minute 19 on the clock? My heart. Oh, God. Here we I've go. I've seen this bat before. I don't know why I'm so nervous. <laughs> Ratsa finds the blade. Yopik offers it as he steps back slowly. The more time Yopik can waste, the more pressure is going to be on Garazzo later as well. So. Mm, yeah, really delaying things. Garazzo trying to find a way through. Oh, oh Yopik! Oh no. It's gonna be down to this call. Referee says no, okay. Grazzo <laughs> really wants them to take a look at that one. Yeah. Let's see. 
I'm always Personally, uh, oh. wishing that they had some kind of box cam in these situations so we could see the Italian box or the German box, you know? Oh, yeah. Would be cool. I always uh, thought that like putting a mic on the coaches would be a cool idea so you can hear what they're yelling. <laughs> Although it might be kind of distracting. It would be nice. Uh, I'd love to hear what Greg Masialis has to say. He's always seems so <laughs> interesting. Yep. Gotcha. Oh, jeez. Clang. Goddamn. Yeah. Maybe jostling, maybe. But Garazzo did stop was... suddenly, and Yapa couldn't really control his momentum there. So it didn't really feel intentional. And also, Garazzo didn't actually appear that jostled by it. He kind of just hit him and then stopped. Yeah, um, he stayed on his feet, fair enough. Yeah. He, he, he needed to uh, throw himself on the ground, <laughs> clutching his yeah, legs. Got to sell it more. <laughs> Too focused on trying to get the touch to accidentally... To, uh, yeah. to, to, to throw, throw himself down. Also, Yopic marching very fast now. Oh! <laughs> Yopic saying, please, please. Uh, does feel more like Garazzo's pair or post, though. Referee's having a look. Garazzo opting to switch weapons. I feel like that's kind of detrimental to him, though. He's kind of on a roll now. Um, if oh, that last yeah, touch yeah. goes to him. So goes this might... Video, Maybe he really wants to talk with his coach or something. Maybe. Know, he's already back. Okay. Like he said. So Maybe I guess he back. wants to waste as little time as possible here. Because, yeah. If you're in the middle of a comeback like this, one of the worst things to do is have a sudden break in the fencing to cool down. And that does go to yeah, Garazzo. Yeah. He's within four. You don't want that break to have Yapik realize, ah, actually, I'm four nil up and I'm Peter Yapik. Yep. Grazzo is weak off the line. We'll see. Referee says it goes to Yapik. <laughs> Yapik wants to get a word in before they have a look. Yep. I think this goes to Yapik, though. Yep. That's the first call. The referee's going to have a look. If they given that kind of call to Grazzo so far... <laughs> Grazzo says he's, the video ref's calling you. Go look. <laughs> Grazzo is really trying to sell this one. We'll They're see. so close now. It's it's he's 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 made it to forty points through some uh, unbelievable miracle. Yeah. It's also felt a little like Grazzo or uh, Yapik is doing some kind of non-standard actions for him. But uh, uh, mm. ah, he said part of so, I suspect, oh, well, usually that means, sorry, that the uh, video ref and the head ref have disagreed. Yep. And so, they decide so. to throw it out. Yeah. Oh, what a time. What a time so. to throw it out. <laughs> Here we go. Yopik again on the march. Gross gives him space. Takes the blade and starts. Very slow. The time is ticking down, though. Yopik offers the blade. Okay, Grazzo finds uh, counter time repost off target. German coach just saying, uh, you have time, you have time to get off the play. Yep. Honestly, though, Grazzo kind of does two in this situation. That that finish by him, he could keep doing that all day as long as Yopik doesn't get one light, and he can keep trying it. Um, it's really on Yopik to try and find a, like one trick that'll still work. Or to just last 42 seconds, which... Uh, might be even better, but we'll see. One dumb trick, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Just one stupid ducking counterattack or one crazy twist, and that's all. But Grazzo was so stable and so, um, like, focused at this point. <laughs> as the crowd claps. Yeah, it's very hard to throw him off with stuff like that, so... This is a situation that would make anyone nervous. Oh yeah. Also, does the crowd cheering you on make you feel better, or does the crowd cheering against you make you want to rise to the occasion? Well, I've had both, I guess, on a small scale. Yeah. I'm not sure. Here we go. Yopik fast march. Lots of searches, and no! Yopik finds a way through. 
in the end it was only 45 40. yeah so really nice from Yafik. i mean not Yafik. well fair enough Yafik. he did well but very nice <laughs> he did win Grotto. <laughs> yeah Grazzo was able to pull that back from being what like 10 or 11 points down to being five points down that's no mean feat against peter Yafik of all people who kind of forces you to take things super slow and, and calm uh, in a very not slow and not calm situation yeah that's one of the bouts of the year i think for sure yeah, and definitely. the funny thing is, this incredible win is not what got them to the Olympics. What got them really? to the Olympics was just Russia getting into the top four. Oh, yeah, yeah. Otherwise, they still wouldn't have made it. Yep, that's yeah, true. It's funny how it works sometimes. But I hope they're at that level uh, when it comes to Tokyo. Oh, yeah. they. I feel like as a team, they're kind of underrated. They Their individual performances are pretty good, but when they come together as a team like that, you can see they can just control things on the strip like no one else. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much for coming on. My pleasure. Anyone who hasn't heard of the Foilist TV, he's a legend. His uh, Rio commentary is incredible. Check out his channel. I will be linking it. And thank you very much for coming on. Yes, thank you. And if by some anti-miracle you've been subscribed to me and not subscribed to James, please do so immediately. He's been doing some amazing commentary work of his own. Um, I'm sure there'll be a link somewhere, and this will be up on your channel anyway. So just click the subscribe button. We hope you enjoyed. And until next time, stay sharp.